اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولن ترد عنک الیہود ولن نصار حتا تتبع ملتہم صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری وجسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسان یفقہ قولی Respected viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The verse which I have read is from Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 120. Allah says that the Jews and Christians will never, never, never be satisfied with you unless you adopt their brand of religion. Either become like them or make them like yourselves. But there is no middle hope, serenity, peace, etc. Chapter number 2, verse 120. Today the lecture is about the current situation in Gaza, in Palestine, in Israel, all these things happening right now. Few things I would like to educate my viewers regarding this old situation going on and this hypocritical or intellectual hypocrisy of the Western media. The way they are doing and showing this, what you call one-sided, biased kind of yellow journalism. This is inshallah, I also will educate my listeners and viewers. You see, it is very, you know, what you call painful to see what's really happening there. Before going to expound my talk, I would like to make this verdict very clear from my platform that I am against all kind of violence, all kind of violence, either from the Muslim point of view or the Jewish point of view. Women, children, all of them in whatsoever violence against them is not allowed in the parameters of Islam. Islam does not permit that. This is very clear. Only Islam permits in the situation, the guy who is coming and fighting, confronting you on the moment of battle, then you have a right to kill him or defend yourself. Other than that, going and catching innocent people, either women, children, not at all. But the situation over there, is not like this. You can see very clearly the videos. The whosoever make the hostages of these Jewish women and these children, they are not, you know, what you call terrorizing them. They are just giving them the rights. They don't touch women, don't touch children. But you see the media, they will never show you those pictures. Yes, they will twist those things just to show them that how, you know, these people are. You see, today I'm going to talk and my lecture will be long. It's not like a short kind of a lecture. I'm going to talk about the history of Jews as well as what the media and hypocrisy and the brutalities and atrocities these Jews are doing for more than 50 years in that land of Palestine or Jerusalem, etc. You see, this is not easy that though you just show one side of the picture and then you just show the rest of the world how innocent, like a, you know, fraily little timid girl you are just acting to the rest of the world doesn't matter you see imagine that the spokesman from israel this guy the foreign spokesman i don't even like to know their names and their designation i you know the way that their faces their faces are so corrupt and so evil so selfish so self-centered egoistic bombastic narcissistic these people, you know, megalomaniacs. And this guy, you know, is saying that no water for Gaza, no gas for Gaza, no food for Gaza. We will provide you nothing. I am asking whosoever attacks you, what those little children has done, what all those, you know what they done. Actually, it's not about that. People don't know. You don't know what is the back of the mind of a Jewish concept. They did not even forgive prophets. And I'm going to tell you what things are written in their Bible. And this is not the first time they're doing it. They love to kill babies. They love to kill children. All the children of Gentiles and Goyams. You ought to die. 
You heathen tribes, you ought to die. Only the people sublime race is the Jewish race. You see, you don't know. People don't know. The monkey these people make out of all of the Western society, especially these wasps, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, the monkey they made you out from the history, the annals of the history, the still you are just, you know, mesmerized by these people. You see, it started long back in Martin Luther and Calvin. I'm going to start my lecture now. Martin Luther and Calvin, Calvin they started his Anglican church. They made protest, protestation against Pope and they picked some people and they said, Pope is bad guy. He doesn't let us do anything. So we will protest against Pope. And then they got the ties with the cut, the ties with Pope. They broke it, everything. And then they founded their first church, the Church of Anglican Church in England. And these people became Protestants. And then they, pro they protested against Pope. And then they were the people who pioneered in migration to the continents of America. And that 1800 to 1900, massive droves after droves. Finally, America became the Protestant nation in Christendom. After doing this, so the influence of Martin Luther was a Jewish set mindset. And then they ought to follow and just to protecting Jews since then. And the major role, of course, Rothschild family played it. These Rothschild family, the Jewish influence over the vast white Anglo-Saxon Protestants who later on found all this great empire, you know, the American, whatever the country is right now, North America, South America, colonization, on and on. They are sharing the same book, Bible and rest of the thing, the history. I'm not going into that. The point is that, that these people are from the beginning. They are one and it is an amazing situation. Roman Catholics are never against Muslims. You watch. These people are never against you. Most of them, they are docile. They are not like an uh, activist in uh, converting you. It is always had to be Protestant who is interested in you, sharing his heaven with you, inverted commas, and try to convince you to uh, become like them. Roman Catholics are docile. They are not interested. They are not militant. They are not what you call uh, preachers, proselytizers, or in other words, Christian missionary. They are not missionaries. And that's why they are very sober people. Even the Pope you can see in Europe, Italy, they're very different as compared to Protestants. So this is the point here. Starting from there, since then, they were looking for the opportunity to go back to Palestine and get that holy land. Theodore Herz, who was the founder of Zionist movement, which is the mountain in uh, Mount Zion, where you call Hekla Sulemania, the Temple of Solomon, and this Masjid al-Aqsa, Doom of the Rock in between. Masjid al you know, what you call it, the Prophet ﷺ went to Mi'raj, heavenly ascension. Then you have Masjid al-Aqsa, is the fortif fortification of the whole area. Then you have a mosque beside that. And that mosque was the foundation of Suleiman Salam's own mosque, which later on they changed into synagogue Jews. And they are there and Muslim Islam is also there because of the common interests. So <clears throat> these people are doing this from the beginning that the Holy Land, Holy Land. And one day they got this chance. You see, you need to understand one thing after 70 AD, Titus, the Roman Emperor, they kicked all the Jews out from the Holy Land. Since then, they were in diaspora. And diaspora means that they were having no lands. Muslims gave them shelters. Even you can see Ben-Gurion said that the golden era for the Muslims were, the time of uh, golden era for the Jews were at the time of the Muslims of Spain. Muslims even made some of the Jews governors at their time. But you know, these Christians, these Roman Catholics, these Catholics under the Inquisition or whatever, these Crusaders, every time they kill these Jews on Easter day, hunt them like the, you know, dogs hunting, you know, the wolves hunting, hunt these people. And these people, they were being hunted on Easter day, hang them, burn them. They are the Christ killers. They are our God's killer. So we will not spare them. 
and they were doing this and they came to Muslim land at the time of Medina. Jews even came to Muslim land and Muslims accepted them. That is why Jews were in Medina Khyber at the time of Prophet because of the diaspora for 70 AD Titus kicked them all out to the Roman Emperor. Since then they were struggling around here and there in the world. Ghettos living in ghettos in slums in huts and shacks. Now these people, they, every time they were having this idea, we were going to go back to Holy Land. And Balfour Declaration 1 happened, Balfour Declaration 2nd, 1948, Israel became an independent state. And since then, they are saying that this land is our, they make the first city Tel Aviv. And the Tel Aviv after that, slowly, slowly, the occup occupation increased, increased, increased up to the land where you know that Golan Heights is ours, Jordan area is ours, the Levant goes to them and still they are not satisfied. They want the part of Medina too, is the part of their plan in the protocols of the elders of the Zion. This guy Theodore hurls and these protocols, they have it, the snake on the map and that map denotes that the part of Medina of somewhere Khyber also belongs to them. And this is what they were trying to do, Abraham Accord, which, you know, this uh, guy, he, he's just seeing that uh, this thing going down, their dream, their dream of, you know, Dajjal coming up by, you know, taking the part of all this area and trying to show the world that how peaceful you are. Sir, let me tell you one thing. Allah says in our Quran, Mufti Azam, the Mufti of all Muftis, Allah. He said that Walan Tarda Ankal Yehudo Walan Sara Hatta Tatabi Amilatum. These Jews and Christians or Muslims be vigilant, be on guard. They will never be satisfied with you unless you adopt their brand of religion. Either become them or make them like yourselves. One more place Allah says. This is from chapter 2, verse 20. Another place Allah says in chapter 5, Surah Maida. And verse number 77 7 and 70, Allah says. You will find some good people, good hearted people among Christians who will say that we are Christians because Allah says amongst them, you will people, you find some good people. They are not puffed up with pride, but you will always find enmity between you and one Jews. Allah says Jews will never be with you. Christians, you will find them that they will always have some kind of tranquility and serenity they will find in you. And this is enough prophecy. You can see that how Jews are hating us. And it is strange, these Christians. I am very strange by seeing the comments. They are so happy. You know, Israel attacking this Gaza, killing everyone. Nothing must be spared. Exact talking like Numbers chapter 31, verse number 30. On the beginning, same Numbers 31. They're talking the same tongue. And you can see that. The things written in the Bible is quite very clearly because the way the heart they have it, you can see this is what exactly the reflection of their deeds. They didn't even spare prophets. Who are you and me? Musa alayhi salam, Moses said to them, you stiff necked people, since I liberated you from Pharaoh's bondage. They didn't even refuse to do anything with Prophet Moses and Joshua, you shall be known with his help. They started, you know, going into and kill this uh, later on. They, they did all these holy jihad whatsoever it's in their own bible jesus christ said to them you kill prophets from righteous able to zechariah the son of bachariah the blood of the prophets will be on your shoulders of jews on the day of judgment are you yet without understanding ye of little faith how long shall i be with you how long i will bear with you are you yet without understanding you little mind you little people you little faith how long? Showing the temple, they're thinking about something else. Jesus showing to them that something else, they are still picking stone and I start, you know, stoning him. Everything they do by themselves, but when the prophets come, they show their hatred that we are better than you. We are the chosen people. Nothing can hurt us. All these sicknesses, they are being condemned by their own prophets. And you're talking about us. You're talking about these people. I pity on Hindus. How can I come to that? Indians, the nation, the nation of rape, rape nation for women. You see that nation, the nation of jugglers, the nation of, you know, what you call Marasis, Chudes, those nation who every person in that, in that nation is dancing. 
the nation of dancing that nation saying that Israel we are with you we support Israel you idiots these Jews they don't even accept their own prophets and you Hindus they hate you they hate from the bottom of their hearts to you you are nothing you Gentile a person with circumcised you know <laughs> you you all are not even circumcised sorry uncircumcised you think they're gonna love you hmm <laughs> I'm going to come to that. I'm telling you, today the video is not short. Even I have to sit for three, four hours. I'm going to keep sitting like that. I don't care because I have to speak much about these people. This is going to be the most comprehensive video, inshallah, of mine. So, the starting with the history and then they got this land. Since that occupation, they are doing this. What is the reason? They said that God gifted us Isaac. Okay, let's so and see the Bible. Book of Genesis chapter 18. God says, Abraham, 12 princes ye shall beget. And God will make you a great nation. Ishmael, thy son, Ishmael, thy seed. Who is thy son and the firstborn according to the Jewish law? All the inheritance must be given to the firstborn. And Isaac was, Ishaq was, sorry, Ishmael was there. And Ishaq, Isaac born lay, way later. Abraham changed to Abraham after circumcision according to the Bible. And Sarah produced Ishaq way later. Who was the first seed? Who? Ishmael alayhi salam. According to who? And from Hagar. And they said that Hagar is a bond woman. So bond woman won't be accepted. No sir. Because according to the Bible it says... That he was having three wives. Sarah, Hagar and Keturah. And they total have eight children. Abraham, peace upon him. So the same Holy Spirit is telling to these Christians. And Paul said that. Wife, concubine. Same thing. And then bond woman. You talk about the bond woman relationship is bad. Then Sarah was the sister of Abraham. Am I speaking truth or not? Search yourself. Who was Sarah? It says in the Bible, when the king was Agarat, something like that, he was uh, in, onto Sarah. Then she lied and said that, okay, she's my sister. And then something later on. And then it says further, the Bible says that, and indeed, Sarah is my sister, but were born from different mother. So, how come? This relation is pure, producing Ishaq, Isaac. But with the relation with the burned woman is bad relation because of Hagar. Because this is what you want to see. You write the book with your own hands. And then you say this is from Allah. Take that you may earn some money. Woe to them what their hands do right. And woe to them what they earn through it. This is what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 79. You see this is true and obvious. The hatred with the pen they use it against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows it. Jews know what their destination is. They know their culminating point. They know they are the highest level. But you see, they are so much impetuous. They are so much, you know, ingratitude. They are so much prideful that they think that they're going to get scot free by all these anomalies, absurdities, propensities, this dirtiness of theirs. So their evilness has been exposed by the prophets has been exposed by the historians. The whole Bible condemns them. Holy Bible condemns Jews within the lips, from the lips of their own prophets. You see, this is how good they have, the documentation. So they said that, no, it was given to Isaac. The inheritance, this is the, the land of Canaan, is everlasting given to who? On the children of Isaac. No, sir, according to your Bible, God says, 12 princes ye shall beget, and God will make you a great nation. And that nation, God said that, you have a right to have a Canaan. They think that, no, Canaan is only belong to them. I said, where it is written? I want any Jew to come and debate me, and show me where in your Bible says that all the inheritance only be given to Isaac, Isaac, not to Ishmael. Where it says? Nowhere. It says contrary opposite that all the privileges and prerogatives were supposed to be given to Ishmael, Ishmael thy son, Ishmael thy seed and 12 princes ye shall beget 
and God will make you a great nation. And this is, was the promise given to who? To Ishmael. It was only his son. So don't tell us that this land belongs to you. If you say it belongs to you, I said then belongs to both of them. Why you have this kind of pretty attitude that this holy land only belongs to you alone? This is our all clash and consternation. This is the reason we have a problem with you. You are keep occupying things. And look at this megalomaniac. These people, the way they talk to the, to the videos, that this is our land. This is our, who gave you this land? God came down and told you this is your land? Everyone can think like that. I can also think that, okay, fine, this is my land, give it to me. Says who? I felt so. My great, great, great grandfather, he came to, he came over here and now you took it after the colonization, all that stuff. Give my land back. I said, give those land back to those natives. In Europe, where this mighty America comes to defend, no matter what we're going to defend Israel, I said, first of all, this land you come from, this land is not even yours. It's not even yours. What you talking about? Give their land to one another. Follow the system of Jews uh, the way they are telling you. Why don't you apply to every nation? Every nation should fight for their lands. Why the Jews have only the special prerogatives? Aha, uh -huh, because it's the holy land. God, you know, gifted them. God gifted you, says who? Only you say that because you believe in your Bible. Nobody else believes in you. So I can bring out the holy scriptures and start condemning things. Allah says in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِكُ وَالْمَغْرِبُ And Allah belongs to East and the West. So Allah is Islam. We have Allah, right? Give me East and the West. Ya Allah, give it to me. So this is sickness of the highest order, ingratitude, these puffing. Allah says in the Quran that these Jews, their hearts are stronger than these mountains, you know. They are stiff-necked people. And Allah hates stiff-necked people and they're kazab, they're liars. They change the kalam of Allah with their hands and they know it. Surah Al Imran chapter 3 verse number 77. Allah knows what they are doing. These people, these Jews, the way they are treating people, Allah knows what you are doing. Prophet gave us the similitude that what happened to the Jews, the propensities and the punishments, same will happen to your Muslims. And these are, this is another thing which I'm going to say. But the reason I quoted you this hadith, that the propensities happen to you by the divine will of Allah. And it's mentioned in your own Bible that God said that how, what he will do to you and then when you did Exodus and all those things happen. And after that, the punishment of Nebuchadnezzar came, the punishment of Cyrus uh, the Great, Sorry, not Cyrus the Great. Cyrus the Great revived you guys. Titus, I meant. The Titus, the emperor, emperor, but punishment, he brought it to you. Nebuchadnezzar, then the king, you know, this Akkad empire, what they did to you. Then the book of Maccabees you have, which you don't believe it anyways, the, the Protestants. The book of this uh, Maccabee empire created on later on. Who were these people who punished you? Nebuchadnezzar, who was he? Then from Assyria. The punishment came to you by Alexander the Great. Who were these people? You see, you know your history very well. And now you're acting like, you know, nothing happened. That was God who did it to you. That Ezra revived you. God gave you many time, many chances, many punishment, but you did not listen. Then the last punishment came to you by Cyrus. And he kicked you out from Jerusalem. Why are you crying about? You kill prophets with your own hands. And why are you crying about? Then you're talking about all these things. What about book of Numbers chapter 31? Where you said that God sent you and Moses commanding and just giving him to the book of Numbers 31. And they go over there and they kill every people and the 33 virgins. They took it and they killed children. Nothing must be spared. It's in the Bible. Even the donkey must not be spared. I said, what these people do? This God is God commanding these all things. Then you find out those virgin girls from 30,000, you find it 33 and you 33, you gave them to the priests and you enjoy the book of Numbers chapter 31 and you're telling to the people that this is the way you fight, checking the people who is virgin and who is not. How did you check that those days? By ravishing them, by raping them and then killing those little children, take them from their feet 
and then hit their heads on the rocks. These are the commandments written in your Bible. And God says that go and kill everything, even nothing must be spared. Look what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says. When you go for a war, don't touch women, children, don't cut the trees, don't kill the animals. Only fight with those who are fighting with you, directly confronting. This is Islam. You talk about, you laugh on us, but you talk, you, what case you have? What case you have? For 60 years of brutality, you're doing the poor Palestinians. And now you are taking, talking like, oh, you know, something great has been taken away from our eyes. I say, shame on your intelligence. What were you doing? Sleeping? You talk about it, nothing moves, huh? I remember this guy, you know, he was showing that, you know, we have a nano Bible uh, in Jaffa, the city of Jaffa, nano Bible, small Bible. And, huh? Forget about your nanotechnology. You can't even fight the macro technology. You don't even know what's coming to you. You're talking about us. Or maybe it's your pretext to make another, you know, Armageddon where you want to instigate Armageddon and we want your Dajjal. I, th I, think, I think so is good. Bring your Dajjal. We want to see your Dajjal. And you know, you're your Mashiach. So our Mashiach also comes and then inshallah we will enjoy fighting these things. Bring your Dajjal. We want to see what he can do. Allah is there. Subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. And you know what's your end. Prophet says, even the stone will say that the Jew is hiding behind me. Get him, get him, get him, O Abdullah. Even the stone, then you're going to be hiding under those, you know, Xithorons, Gharqad, like the little rabbits, the way you are acting. Have you seen these Jewish soldiers? You see when they get cut, look at them. Allah says in the Quran, by the way, that they are cowards by nature, Kuffar. You see, they can only run on the machines. Iblis ko hai, Europe ki machino ka sahara. Only they are sitting on the machinery, not what else they have. You see, watch them, how terrified they are. You know, like, like shaking here, Allah says in the Quran, the Jew, especially for the Jews, that they are terrified of deaths. You know why? Because Allah knows that they are liars. They are guilty. This is ayah in the Quran. You know that they are cowards, especially for the Jews, that they are afraid of deaths. Because they know Allah says, go and kill yourselves. If you are truth, then see, 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 do these things and you see what will happen to you. And they know it. And they are just playing games on us, you know. So, kill every little woman, children, whatever. It's all halal. You know why it's halal? Because at the back of the mind, they have the concept that everyone you can kill, no problem. Because we are the chosen people of God. And these all are Gentiles. And they are made to be exploited, like donkeys are made for us to be exploited. So all other people other than Jews are made to be exploited and God will not ask any question. This is the whole eschatology and philosophy or dynamic of the Jewish people. They call them the capital Jew, Judaism. These were not the teachings of their prophets, but this is what they made a racial religion a cult and they deviated those Christian too by making Jesus God for so Paul of Tarsus. I don't want to go into that. And they are doing this for many, many years in the annals of history because they, in the back of the mind, they said, we will question Archangel Gabriel that how dare he came to Prophet Muhammad from Arabian, Arabian Prophet instead of going to pick the last prophet from our lineage. So we have confrontation with Allah. And we will see Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. We will put him in the dock and we will question him. How dare you send Archangel Gabriel to Prophet Muhammad. This, you want to talk to these sick people? These sick people you want to discuss with them? Now, justifying for that cause, what happened, that incident, and killing every woman, you just, you know, what you call straighten the whole of the city you you destroyed the city upside down is it the same teaching you have from your bible i think so exactly these are being same in book of numbers go and do whatever you want book of samuels go and kill and whenever donkeys must not be spared kill the little man woman ah but keep yourself young virgins those little ones are beneficial for you, but all the rest of them, liabilities, kill them all. But keep yourself those virgins. I'm not exaggerating. 
Numbers chapter 31 verse number from 1 started. Ammonites and Moabites. You will see what I'm talking about. The genealogy. Same went over there. You see these things they are doing with you. They didn't even spare their prophets. And you are talking. You want to. You want to understand them. They are living in their own zone. They make monkey out of those protestants. They are ruling them. Controlling them. They are helpless. You see the way they are acting with him. Helpless people. And Hindus. This is a want to talk, you know. <laughs> these Hindus, man. These cows piss drinkers. These Hindus, man. <laughs> these cows. Cows piss drinkers. The cows, you know, dung eaters. Now these people are telling to Jews that we will come and fight against Hamas. We will come to fight. Oh, you poor docile cow worshippers. Listen to me very carefully. Jews didn't even spare their own prophets. You think that they are with you? They don't even count you anywhere in the history. You are idol worshippers. <laughs> And you think that, and you know, this is the guy, the spokesman, he said that India, you know, offered us and we tell them we're going to fight ourselves. We don't need your help. These people licking the boots of these Jews, they are licking the boots, the nation of rape. They are licking the boots of these Jews. Oh, you know, we will come to rescue. I said, just focus in your own country, India, the biggest democratic country and the most rape nation on planet <laughs> where the women are not safe every person is a, is a is a juggler is a dancer is a singer is a marasi is a chuda chamar every person in that nation is only dance you know nothing else promiscuity this uh, premarital sex marital sex relations love all their fantasy world they're living in that area and there's bollywood all this Bollywood under the umbrella of Bollywood, this, this, this nation is telling <laughs> to those Palestinians the specter of a war for 70 years. They are, they are the tough people on planet. And they're telling them that, oh, we will come and fix you. You <laughs> Jews. I mean, trust me, I couldn't stop laughing. Jews, Jews will, Jews will use you, not even use you. You're not even worth to be used by the Jews. You Hindus, don't, don't even think about the Jews will even take you anything advantage from you. You are nothing in front of them. You see, you are the cow worshippers and nothing is beyond, you know. I mean, it's an insult to my intellect. Even to discuss the relationship with these two. But they are, they want to be. Oh, our Jews, please let us be with you. We will fight against, we will help you. We will become your ally. You see, let me tell these Hindus. You see, fear from that day when the Muslim will be awakened. We are asleep. Just be afraid, I'm telling you, of that day when the Muslim will wake up. The awakenings. Then, you know, Nikal kar sahara se jisne Rome ki sultanat ko ulat tiya tha. Hamne suna hai un kudusiyon se ke wo sher ab phir ho shiar ho ga. This is gonna happen very soon. Why are you calling your trouble? You need to focus on your own land. You Indians, you democratic jugglers, focus on your own land. You don't even have a basic decency. You know how you treat people. In your country, people are dying on the road. You start making videos. You can't even dare to help. You kill people. You are the mob lynch. You know, you are the gangsters. And you're talking about, you know, helping those people. We're going to help Jews. Jews don't need you. They don't want to use you. That you are not even worth to be used by the Jews. You know that? Living in your own comfort zone, fantasy world in the haze. So focus on your dancing. Focus on your raping. Focus on your juggling. 
focus on your aerobatics, you know, gymnastics, and focus on your IT, inverted comma, Silicon Valley, focus on that and drink the piss of a cow and eat the dung of a cow. This is the best you can do. Don't think beyond that because you're, say, you are nothing in compared to the world, same like a juice. On and on. Now, why they both harm one, one another? You know, Prophet Muhammad says, All kufar is one nation against you, always. You see, Jews, Ibrahim, Accord, they want to make extension, extension that, okay, this, this, this land is ours, so we make the greater Israel. Congratulations. On the other hand, India has been changed to Bharat. And this is what Dr. Israr Ahmad Rahimullah said it. The dream of Ashoka, Mahabharat, the great Indian empire. This is the Indus Valley. And this is what they're thinking. Give us the part of Sindh. We will not give you the chunk of Kashmir. So same mentality you are dealing. They are not letting it go, the occupied territories. They are not letting it go, the Kashmir territories. Can't you see? <laughs> they are the same birds, you know, the flock, they're flying together. What do they think that they need you for or for us? So they are on the same flock. I said, the time will come, Prophet says, that the stone will cry. And the time will come, Prophet says, and before the Isa ibn Maryam's ascension, that you will drag the king of India under the chains, Ghazwai Hind. And you will conquer that India in completeness. And inshallah, that thing will come very soon. I said, what do you have? What do you have to tell us? What do you have to tell us? I'm telling, I'm asking these, you know, Hindus. What do you have to preach to the world? Accept your Bollywood and accept your mob lynching and killing people. That's all. That's all you have, nothing else you can show to the world. And then show in your movies, glamouring, how good India is, you know, how tolerant India is. You know, people are not stupid. People are not morons. You know, people know what you're doing. Maybe you're good in, you know, things, uh, manipulating, deceiving to the people. Some people get fooled by you, mesmerizing, tantalizing, but people are not stupid. They know what you are doing and what plans you are having against Pakistan. Inshallah, Pakistan will survive. And Pakistan will be always the bone in kebab, always the bone in the meat for Jews to swallow. That's why Qaid Azam, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, he refused Ben Gurion. He said, go away, we will not accept Israel. And he said that we will always bother you, India in between, and East India, West India, West Pakistan, East Pakistan, you know what happened later on. They were planned this. You know, Pakistan is the only Islamic country, Alhamdulillah, I'm proud of it, that we are nuclear state. They want to put, you know, jeopardize, they want to put our nuclear into jeopardy, so they can do whatever they want. May Allah, you know, always keep us secure because Surah Anfal said, chapter 8, Allah says, always be stern and ready with the full equipment and the weapons against the enemy. Prophet said, the best weapon is the weapon of the enemy's weapon you use against him or her. You see, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Pakistan sustain in the same power of nuclear. You see, this is the need. Otherwise, these people, they will snatch you. And, and this is the biggest problem Israel has with Pakistan from, the, from its birth. Both were created on the same notion. Jews, holy land, religious inclination, orientation, connotations. Same applies to Pakistan. Ka matlab kya? La ilaha illallah, objective resolution. Nothing must be done to the repugnant of the Holy Quran and Sunnah. Nothing must be done to the repugnant, near to this likeness, will not be accepted in Pakistan. How would you accept that? Huh? How would you stomach that? The, the objective resolution is very clear in Pakistan, Alhamdulillah. But you know, unfortunately, we have some loopholes. Nobody follows that. But concrete foundation, rock foundation, 
the foundation of the statement of the verdict of your identity is there. You cannot eradicate that. And this is, inshallah, Pakistan, I hope, will become something great for the people of Palestinian and all those Muslims who are suffering. You see, world knows what you are doing. But you see, people become blind. And on and on, this sickness goes on and on. Now, coming to the last point, media. You see, we have two kinds of journalism. You know, I did bachelor's in journalism, alhamdulillah, and I'm qualified to speak on this subject very vividly. And I did not do, you know, journalism in a sense like, you know, cramming and go and do the exam. I did the whole of the books. So I did it with understanding. You see, we have two types of journalism, yellow journalism, normal journalism. Sugar coating, lying, subterfuging, bamboozling, let you know speak day and night, lie, lie, lies, and then later on it comes to be true. You see how hypocrites the West, you know? On the surface of the earth, when you see these white people, you think that they're most you know humble-hearted people, soft-cornered. But it's strange. They don't see Muslim children dying. They don't see that little kids are dying, the babies coming from the rubble of these, you know, Israel aircraft keep throwing bombs after bombs. Nobody cares like what they is there saying to the media openly that no water for them, no nothing for them, nothing for them, nothing for them. I said, you want to fight, fight the people who are confronted with you. What those poor innocent people did. You see, this is and all of the media is saying, oh, they have a right to defend. Everybody has a right to defend, but defend defending has some laws and parameters. This has happened because had it not been from United Nations to do justice for Kashmir from the beginning and for the Palestinian, all those, you know, laws you've passed it and the bills you passed it. If you had followed that, these situations wouldn't have happened on the first point. But you see, you ignored it deliberately. You just overlooked them deliberately. And that's why the situation goes into this situation. So I'm telling why this hypocrisy? Why? You see, you don't see the children of these people, but you see your own children. You talk about Jesus Christ, father living in the heaven and loving, you know, uh, people you are in the world. And this is the love you show. You see, I don't expect anything from the Jews. I already told you this is their religion to exploit anyone who is who is a Gentile, exploit anyone who is, you know, not from the from the children of their own races, rest of them. They don't care the whole of the planet dies or not. You see, this journalism, hypocrisy. Why you talk like this? You have no moral values inside you. You have no fear of your creator. The same people now getting killed right now in Gaza. And you don't care about that. The only you care about the hostages you have because of those Jewish children and women. Though other people have no woman for 50, 60 years. You see, there is a video and there's a picture where these Jewish soldiers, they are making a boy, like a, like a child, chill child, making him as what you call shield. They put him on the hammer and make him shield, like from, the, from against the bullets. Can't you see those things? How many journalists you killed? And you don't even a basic manner, you spit on Christians and you don't care. How come you all these things swallowing it? I don't understand. For brutalities, atrocities, these people are doing for 70 years live on the videos. Occupying their country, their, their homes and just telling them to get out. And then the morning, if you don't get out, they just shoot you. They do something. They just abduct you. All of the people are watching this. I don't have statistics, but how many people are killed under your occupation? You never see those things. Now the hostages is there, children are there. How brutal, you know, these people are doing. You see, I said in the beginning, Islam does not allow anyone to harm women, children, only the people who are confronting direct and old men, no. If you have your, in your war of prisoners, Islam has a complete way of system to deal with the war prison. No torture whatsoever. Islam doesn't allow that. If anybody says that they are doing it, they are liars. 
or it's a false news or it's a people who are just you know staging to show to the world that look how we are doing this lies deception so the journalists why are you doing this and hindu times <laughs> indian you know you know we have a funny funny kind of jokes you know uh, the guy is going to the meat shop and he's putting them you know one kilo meat and there's another guy uh, standing on the right side and he said can you make his you know bag double who the hell are you to tell to the shopkeeper to make nothing you no, you are not even buying that meat you had the shop is not even yours who are you to tell that make the shopper double you know the shop make this bag double up why this is what india is doing nobody asks you to to talk in the media and the way they are portraying look what happened to pakistan look what happened in, in, in palestine you see these people are so zalim these people are brutal you know and uh, you know israel has a right to do it israel has a right to do this israel has a right to do this i say let's come to the common terms and after that i will come to the last point about the tittle tattle of jews and christians how hypocrites their minds have become let me ask you a simple question those indians especially who are supporting with ignorance have no knowledge and whosoever is supporting israel in all this cause imagine in one day or another day other nation come to your land take your homes okay do whatever with your family and nobody can do anything and the reason the guy government gives to you that this is god gifted me so get out from this land i said how would you feel it put that yourself into that position how would you feel it the where and where the shoe pinches i said put yourself as empathy how you feel just empathize it you see then you will feel how you feel it if somebody do exactly what happened to palestine i said if you are honest you will know that from your heart this is not right when the history goes you cannot claim your lands on the grounds of religious explanation anyone can has a right to do this so this is totally unacceptable unethical of morality and justice i said think about it last point <clears throat> what is happening to christians we muslims we believe in jesus christ it is very sad to see the christians are supporting you know israel very good you did it we support you christians we support you we support you we support you you people cognitive dissonance the you know running suffering from mental illnesses couldn't even explain your own trinity you are telling to them that we are with you and those people killed your jesus christ those people still call him bastard those people call him bin pandera the roman soldier by the name of pandera the raped mary produced this illegitimate son jesus christ they spat on him according to them according to you you enjoyed that they killed him on the cross which later on became your redemption for you for them they still think he was the imposter they got rid of him and they are waiting for his own messiah you are supporting them for what we believe in jesus one of the mightiest messengers of god at least we believe in him mary the chosen the woman of above the all nations and jesus christ in the righteous company of god we believe jesus is coming back we believe these things miraculous birth but jesus without any male intervention where these jews mocked and ridiculed and even now they said that jesus was the imposter and with that notion they are living in israel and they're spitting on christian crosses can't you see when the christians have this you know holy stuff going on in jerusalem they spit on christians these jews walk in spit on them and calling jesus bastard astaghfirullah those people you're supporting and you're saying that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the antichrist i said you really are sick you really suffering from cognitive dissonance and jesus said to you i'm ending with this judge ye not that ye not be judged under what judgment you're judging others you hypocrites why don't you see the smoke in your brother's eye first remove the beam from your own eyes and see the smoke in your brother's eye you are blinded by your own self what you going to tell what is right and wrong the person who killed you jesus your lord inverted commas 
they don't hear the spitting on you and you're licking back to them. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.